Hi guys, I have this old 11 horse Briggs and Stratton electric start engine. Uh, those of you who follow my daily, daily videos have seen me talk about this a couple times now. This is from a hydro sander. Uh, I bought this last year for $50 at a garage sale and it was running. But with bad gas being how it goes, the gas has turned bad and uh, it's going to need a carburetor rebuild. That's unfortunate with... Um, if you don't uh, use the gas or swap it out right away, that's very unfortunate. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to clean out the carburetor, change the oil, and we're going to put this on the log splitter and have a really powerful log splitter because that's a 79cc, probably a three horse engine, which is way too small for the job. So you can watch me as I sit here and first test to see if it's going to run. It is electric start only. And then I'm going to see if. Uh, See about cleaning it and getting it running smoothly, and uh, you can watch as we uh, proceed. All right, first of all, I'm going to lay this on here flat on the trailer. It's good to have the trailer as a, as a solid work surface to to do this. Yeah, things handy. Yeah, it's very nice. So, what I want to do first is find the starter fluid. Do you know where that is, Chris? Oh, oh there. Can yeah. you hear me that, please? All right. My first thing is to see uh, if this thing will sputter at all. I want to make sure the gas is turned off. I do not want any bad gas any more than we need uh, getting into that carburetor or into the engine. I'm guessing it's bad gas because I've had this for a year, so I'm just going to assume the worst. And. Uh, Clean it up. Well, the guy had this oiled well. I'd never seen this that there's so much uh, that's so clean and oiled. That's rare to see somebody take care of their engine. Yeah. It's all been freshly oiled. So I'm going to take off the air filter and give it a spray of starter fluid just to see if it's going to sputter into life. Uh, and make sure there's nothing more major that we'll have to do here. There's some oil settled in from there. You put too much oil in that. Settled into the uh, carburetor bowl. So now. Get some jumper cables on here. And the negative is obviously right here. Ne uh, yeah, there's your positive. And the negative right there. That's fine, the whole base is negative. Yeah, I would say it doesn't matter. Okay, let's see what we got here. I want to first see if what's on and off and what if this will run. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that up is on. I really don't know, I can't tell. But we'll find out in a minute here. Yep. Up is on. Okay, so it wants to run. That's a good thing. Uh, I'm going to clean the carburetor on this and uh, we'll get it running. So I'll get my tools and we'll be back in a few minutes, guys. Hey, everybody. All right, what we got here, I want to remove the fuel line clamp. I want to attempt to free that up. It's an old line, so it might be stuck on pretty bad. Usually players help a little bit of twisting action back and forth. Sometimes you got to cut it off. Sometimes it's really bad. Screwdriver sometimes helps if you can get a wide tip screwdriver in there. Okay. Won't hurt to replace the fuel line in this anyway. It's looking really bad. Now, We've got, the carburetor has a mounting plate on the engine, so there's a, there's a screw on the bottom of the carburetor which goes to the mounting plate which holds the throttle mechanism and everything, so I don't want to mess with all that. I just want to take off the screw off the bottom of the carb, and there's two screws on the top which holds it to the uh, manifold. 
And then there's a couple wires that goes down to the plate, which I don't want to remove. Always what I do first is I look for all the linkages, make sure where everything is. There's one linkage here. Looks like a manual choke valve. Whatever engine this was on, the um, wire has been removed. So there's your choke. All right, I'm gonna have to look inside and see which way it's choked on this. I can't see it from here. Okay. So, let's see what size that is. I might have to get an open end wrench to do this. Okay. I've got a socket driver, a ratchet driver with an extension. Let me see. Tighten, loosen. That works fine. This is an old, old Briggs and Stratton. Diehards, these things are. If you take care of them, keep that oil changed. They'll take care of you. Okay, now. Take the two screws off the top, and I think we should have this freed up. I might need a screwdriver ratchet. Uh, a ratchet driver with a screw. And see how tight that is. If I can break it loose or not. Yeah, yeah. I need a either a beefier screwdriver or a, a adapter for my ratchet driver. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I've got myself a beefier screwdriver. Hopefully, it'll reach better. If nothing else, it has a hole in the handle for turning better. Oh, yeah. Um, I like that when they have the hole in the handle. Yes, much better. Yourself, put a magnetic pickup tool in my little toolbox. That's important. Dropping these little pieces down inside. Now, when you're taking a carburetor off, you want to be very careful and gentle because you don't want to break the gasket. Usually the gaskets are easily reused. Now I've got a little bit of a jam up on that bottom plate. And the gasket is, there we go, got the gasket off. Now I have the, I have this rubber breather tube and a, uh, the linkage, the carburetor linkage to deal with. See if I can push that breather out. That's sometimes pretty tight. This one is a good one. All right, I've got to get that breather tube out and get the carburetor linkage off. Carburetor's off. Breather tube is out. Okay, now I have the carburetor free. This is a beast of a carburetor. The good old engine. Now maybe I can see inside where the choke sits. Let's see the choke. Okay, there's open, there's closed. Okay. Okay, there's Ah, choke is this way, right? Open. Okay, yeah. Okay, there's an indicator on the carburetor for the choke. Now that I see that. All right, I'm going to open this up and there's some oily gassy gassy oil or whatever inside there. Uh, when the guy had done the um, air filter, he had a little too much oil in there. So that's not pretty. So I'm going to take this over to the bench and I'm going to clean this off and uh, 
then outside externally. I'm going to clean it, brush it, and then I'm going to get the air compressor going. And then I'll open this up and we'll clean it out, clean the ports, and put it back together and the engine should run well. Alright guys, I moved my carburetor up to the workbench. Now I'm just going to give it a little light hosing down with the carburetor cleaner first to loosen up any dirt and gunk. We first just want to loosen it all up. Okay. Now, we're going to let that sit for a minute. I'm going to hit it again. And I'm going to use a rag and I'm going to wipe it down to get all the, the gunk off there. I'm also going to brush it gently with a brush. So, we'll be back in a minute. All right, guys. I like to clean the exterior of a carburetor as well as the interior. So I'm trying to loosen up all the junk because a clean outside gives you less chance of getting dirt inside while you're working later on. Nothing worse than cleaning up your carburetor and then having some dirt fall inside afterwards. It's really annoying. So that's why I always clean the outside of a carburetor when I'm working. Sorry, I don't know if I'm blocking your view, but I'm trying to block the filth from spraying all over from the brush that I'm using. I like to clean it up thoroughly. So I won't bore you with all this, I'm going to clean this up and then we'll be back in a few minutes when I've got the outside cleaned. I'm sure you get the idea here. Just a somewhat coarse bristle brush and some carburetor cleaning and some brushing action. Hi guys, I used the air compressor, uh, I've got the generator over there running. I'm going to shut it off again for a minute I think. I used the air compressor to uh, blow the, off the dirt from here, so let me go shut it off. I'm off the grid, so if I need to have any high powered equipment I have to use a generator. So what I've done is I've con continued brushing this, used some uh, carb cleaner and a brush, and got all the dirt off, and then I uh, blew it with an air compressor with high power air to ensure that the uh, the dirt doesn't get into the carburetor later. I'm going to start out with this screw since it's on the carburetor. Is that the right? I don't know if that'll fit. I might have to get an open end. Um, Now that's probably the jet right there. Yes, there's the needle. It looks relatively clean, so I don't think too much bad gas got in there. I just wanted to be sure what it looks like. Before I put this on the log splitter, I really want to make sure this is a clean engine. Let me see if I have a socket that small. Probably not. Let me see if that is. Nope. All right, I don't have a socket that small in this kit. I prefer to use a socket than a screwdriver on these, although it is a screw. Most of them aren't that terribly tight. The oil and the gas keeps them pretty freed up. I loosen all four screws first so I know that I got them all. Alright, we'll pull them out. I always put everything off all together in one spot so I don't lose anything. Now that I have the screws off, there's a little bit more dirt available that I can brush off. 
when I get the top off this carburetor, I'll take that aside and clean it off. We don't want any dirt getting inside later. It may be a very clean carb inside because it wasn't, uh, I didn't run it or do anything with it. The way this one is set up, the fuel settles down in the bottom inside. So it may be clean, but we'll see. I just didn't want to take a chance after sitting for a year after I purchased it and then um, risk it sucking in some filthy gas on me. So you want to gently give it a tap. Sometimes there's a pry point on them. This one doesn't have anywhere to pry. I don't want to pry because I don't want to wreck the gasket. So the key now is to find a comfortable way to break that free. That's on there. Okay. I'm going to have to carefully, very carefully try to pry this. I really don't want to harm the gasket. It's on there good. There it goes. Really carefully tap it. You don't want to hurt anything. Got the gasket sticking in one spot and not in another, so very gently, very gently pry that up. I don't want to wreck the gasket. It's one spot where you can save a little bit of money if you're really careful, although it's not much for gasket. Time is, time is what you lose the most if you have to order a gasket. Right, I'm going to get a knife, which I don't happen to have here. I'm setting up a new tool set for my uh, small engine stuff, just for small engines. Let me go get a knife to pry that gasket off carefully. Alright guys, with much coaxing, I finally got it apart. And there is some sediment in the bowl. A fair amount of sediment. I want to show you a better view of that. Hold on. It's not bad, but that's that's not from me leaving it sit. That's from age. Where are we? Sorry. I can't see what I'm doing because the sun is shining so bright on me. But it's relatively clean inside otherwise. So, first thing, we're going to clean the bowl. Little carburetor cleaner. Little screwdriver. Loosen up all that rust. No pressure needed, just gently work it around in there. Small bristle brush would be nice as well, but uh, sometimes you got to scrape lightly. Just want to get all that rust out of there. It's all caked on and coated. It's been sitting there for years. All right, I'm going to work that bowl clean. Now, I got the bowl clean as much as I can. Now what you want to do, you want to shoot a sh jet of carburetor cleaner, that's why this nozzle is good, right down that tube and watch it spray out the side holes. I hope you can see this well. I can't see the camera display because of the sun. Can you see that spraying out? Three jets. Okay. Now if I go up from underneath through the jet here, that screw that I pulled out originally, I should shoot fluid right through there. See that? That needs to be clean. All those ports need to be clean. We can't have any any gunk in there at all. That will affect the performance of the engine later. Also, 
this has a big neck in, uh, inside it. And there's a lot of gunk inside that carburetor, inside that, that hole. We can't have any of that in the air intake line or air intake lines. We can't have any of that gunk in there. There's something deep down in. Got to clean that whole system inside there. Get all that stuff out. Clean that as well as you can. I don't know what was in there. It looks like some weird odd stuff in the walls of this. Never know what can get inside these through the years. Okay. Looks like melted plastic is inside there. It's very weird. Anyway. There's no real way to get inside here. So. All I can do is try to work it out as good as I can any gunk that's in the bottom inside this chances are it's not really any ever going to get in to the um, engine but I'd rather do a good job now all right I'm gonna get the air compressor because there's a lot of goop in there so uh, I'll be back in a minute and blow that out with air <laughs> 